happy week ahead. You're listening to the Gisela Show. Hello, Amnon. Hello, Gisela. Happy Monday. You are, you are, uh, I was looking at uh, my show and I, you know, uh, all the time, I have so much fun doing this show that I just didn't realize it's almost three years that I've been doing this show. Isn't that um, nice? Uh, next month, it's three years. Nice. And it's really, it's really been a, you know, time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah, and, and you're enjoying uh, it. And that's good that you're enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I enjoy talking to you. Um, we are far apart, but uh, still, well, once a week we come together and we come together with our listeners. Yeah. And yeah. And as always, please, 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 if you have a question, please uh, go to the chat room or call in. Best probably do the chat room. Uh, you can call in. Uh, I will give you the number. So and um, 919 919-518-9773. Or through Skype, voice only, computers 2K voice. But really, like Gisela already told you, the best thing is to just log into the chat. You are, if you're not watching on the NissanCommunications.com uh, page of Gisela, then you're missing the chat. You need to go there and log into the chat and participate. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's for your benefit, not for our benefit. It's for your benefit. If you have a question, please just don't hesitate to ask. I have a great show prepared for you. I know one of the things apart from politics, and politics is uh, really a little bit uh, part of this because it produces a lot of stress these days. And I will give you the reason why we have so much cancer in this country, not only in this country, all over the world, wherever there is a modern world, where people live in a primal um, plant-based uh, diet society, uh, cancer is not as apparent. But in our modern world, Cancer is very apparent, and it doesn't seem like we there's anybody who doesn't have a friend, a family member, uh, or really that, you know, it's so prevalent, it's everywhere. And I will give you today one of the reasons why it is. Now, you will tell me that there is there are other causes for it, and I'm sure they are. But in 1931, uh, there was a scientist in Germany, and that was the Hitler era, right? And, I mean, we always talk about what a, what a terrible guy Hitler was, and he was. He was a terrible, terrible guy. But... He did have some real concerns. And one of the concerns that he did say is, we want to stamp out cancer. And he had a whole cadre of scientists that he commissioned and the government paid for to stamp out cancer. And Dr. Otto Heinrich Warburg, who was born in 1883, and he was a uh, biochemist, he was an MD, and he was um, a uh, Nobel Prize winner in physiology or medicine in 1931. And what he did, he did experiments with cancer cells. 
And what he did is he said, how do cancer cells live? How do they, how do they divide? What environments does a cancer cell need to divide? And he came up with different scenarios, but the most pregnant one, the one that he felt was the most important one was that cancer cells will not be able to live in an alkaline state. Now here I will explain that. We have heard that before, but you know, let me explain of how that came about. And I will read you part of this, uh, what I, uh, because, you know, I want to get this right. Uh, according to Warburg, damaged cell respiration causes fermentation. Now, we know that that is true because um, when we have, um, you know, bread and yeast is a live cell, really. And when it gets to be a little bit too moist, it causes fermentation and it causes gases. You can smell it. Fermentation causes gases also. And that causes a very acidic state. The whole environment around it is very acidic. Cells need that acidity to divide. Cancer cells cannot grow nor develop in a body in an alkalinity of 7.36. Now, any of you who do not know um, the pH levels. I do because I'm also an esthetician and I have studied that and I I work with, with the pH mantle of the skin also. The Our skin and our body has a state, a pH state between 5.5 and 7. That is the that is the state that it's balanced. Very seldom, very, very seldom, anybody has that balanced state. If they do have, if people do have a balanced uh, physiology between 5.5 and 7, they likely never really get sick because not only cancer can thrive in a in a acidic state, but most everything else. Yes? So five is on the acidic side? On the acidic side. So if you go above seven, it's going to the alkaline. Alkaline. Side. Yes. You got it. Right. You got it. So we want to be between seven and eight, we want to be in an alkaline state. We want our body to be in, in an alkaline state between seven and eight. Anything higher is also not very good because it then stops a lot of other functions in the body. But let's just be concerned about how to stay healthy. And also, another byproduct of that is losing weight. Now, let me explain that. So he firmly believed, Dr. Warburg, that there was a direct relationship between pH and oxygen. Higher pH means higher concentration of oxygen molecules, while lower pH means lower concentration of oxygen. A normal healthy cell undergoes an adverse change when it can no longer take in oxygen to convert glucose into energy, which is our main function. That is the main function of our cells. 
In the absence of oxygen, the cell reverts to a primal nutritional program to nourish itself by converting glucose through the process of fermentation. The lactic acid produced by fermentation lowers the cell's pH and destroys the ability of DNA and RNA to control cell division. Did you understand that? No. Okay. The lactic acid that is produced by fermentation, there is a lactic acid that is produced by that. That lowers the cell's ability to use the DNA and the RNA which is in within the cell that controls cell division. So when that is out of whack, when there is too much lactic acid, cells will divide too fast. Okay. The control mechanism isn't there anymore. You get it? Got it. All right. If anybody out there, if you have a question you don't understand, I want you to understand this because this is very, very important for us. The cancer cells then begin to multiply if that mechanism isn't there when that control, because it's sort of like, um, let me explain it a little bit uh, differently. When, when you have a... Um, clock that runs on a battery and the battery you first put the battery in and the clock runs in its normal right way now you put the clock onto a different energy provider let's say you put a put a battery on it that is much stronger all of a sudden you don't get the time anymore but you get the the finger of the of the clock going brrrr, because it's out of whack. It's not the right energy. It's not the right environment. If it's too slow, you don't get the right energy either. You don't get the right time. Does that make it a little more clear? Absolutely. Yeah. So that is exactly what happens in our body. So we have known since 1931, this knowledge has been since 1931. And that's why I think I, I really, I was so excited when I found this uh, information because, you know, everybody has been saying to me and people are always saying, well, you know, I know that they have found a cancer cure already. No, this is not a cure. This is a prevention. This is a prevention. This is how we can prevent cancer. This is not a cure. Once we have cancer, yes, we can slow down with these methods that I will tell you. And we can, can slow down and we can probably also make it, I don't want to say go away, but once this, this mechanism between the, um, the acidic and alkaline level and the pH level in the body is harmed. It's very hard to get that back into, into alignment. So we want to do this. We want to get this right. We don't want to get cancer in the first place. But since 1931, we know this, this study. This guy won a Nobel Prize for this, okay? I don't understand why it is not more talked about and why people don't, don't shout it from the rooftops. It is rumored that Warburg was awarded the second Nobel Prize but was unable to receive it uh, because he was Jewish and blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, those, he, lived in, he lived in terrible times, just like we live today in terrible times. Uh, 
Dr. Warburg finished one of his most famous speeches, The Prime Cause and Prevention of Cancer, with the following statement. Nobody today can say that one does not know what cancer and its prime cause is. On the contrary, there is no disease whose prime cause is better known. So that today, ignorance is no longer an excuse that one cannot do more about prevention. My sentiments totally. Now, considering the fact that um, we know of the P that it is a cause of the pH level out of whack. But how do we get it back? How do we not get it? Now, there are many, many reasons. One is um, that we don't know, people do not know enough about what to eat and how to eat it. There is not, we should, that should be really in reality, I believe we should teach it to the children in school. But we want, because the cancer industry is, and the pharmaceutical industry is so powerful and so big, they make so many billions and trillions, that why would they want to, right? They make too much money as it is what they are. But that's why I'm here. I'm here to tell you the facts. Uh, many people would be shocked to find out that we may gain weight from eating cheese, not only because it's rich in fat, but because cheese is has the most acidity of any foods. Now, cheese has... Uh, let me get the, the numbers right here. But mostly due, due to its high acidity level. In, in response to high pH acid, the body creates fat cells to store the acid. And here's the kicker. The body stores this acid. So even if you start today to eat for a month, right, you want prevent it. You have to change your diet completely. Almonds have 70% fat and pork has 58% fat. However, pork has the highest acidity value. And what is the other white meat sold most in the United States? That's pork. While almonds are alkaline, and cucumbers and watermelon have a totally alkaline. If we eat plant-based, whereby, whereby beans are very high in acidity. Got it? What you need to do is what you, you need to find out the pH of all the foods that you like to eat. Once you understand that, then you will be able to change your diet and you will live in a way that you very likely will be able to avoid cancer. If there is another if, because one of the most predominant factors in, in cancer and cell multiplication is stress. Stress is the most important factor, especially we live in such a stressful world today. Food, stress, mood, and music alter our pH. That's why I believe in Buddhism and meditation. The more you meditate, the more you calm your body, the more peaceful you become, the healthier you will be. I'll say that again. 
the more peaceful you become, the more you calm your body, the healthier you will be. And stay healthy. And that is why, you know, everybody who comes to my house here, they always, everybody always says, wow, everybody lives here forever. My husband is 88. I'm way, way over 70. And we all are pretty healthy. I mean, I would say we are, everything is functioning. We are working. Nobody has cancer. Nobody is is uh, continuously. Yeah, I have a little me- neck problem. My husband once in a while has a little problem with his feet. His his uh, uric acid one, once in a while gets a little out of whack. We eat for a few days more salads. We eat other things, and I always and I don't work for this company, okay? But I found a fabulous thing. And this is, can you see this? It's alkaline water. Now you can make this. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can my you can make alkaline water. They have these Kangen Kangen things. I mean, I don't know. They cost a couple thousand dollars. I don't believe that. This thing is $3.99. I buy a jug like this. It lasts me for uh, like four days or five days. And for a couple thousand dollars, I can buy a lot of jugs of those, you know. And I drink this water at least two, three times a day. It helps me to alkalize my body. And when I, I notice when I don't drink it, I have less energy. I'm more blah, blah. I'm more, oh, I don't want to really do anything. When I drink this, I feel like everything is calming down a little bit more. I feel more revived and I feel more quenched. This water seems like it quenches you more. It, 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 it it subdues the thirst more. Now don't drink it with ice cubes because the ice cubes are not made unless you make ice cubes from this water. Just drink it like this. Um, and what I, what my, my point is that if you live like this, if you have, if you control your pH now, very important for people who are overweight also, or who have liver problems because the liver really controls the so-called bad LDL because it binds the toxins and deactivates the acidity and waste from certain foods so that it does not cause atherosclerosis, another byproduct of that you should be more alkaline you will de-stress your liver. Anybody who has hep C, I mean, it, it's a new, it's a new, we had, we had cancer, then we had diabetes, and now, now we are promoting hep C, you know, oh, you got to have this, this pill for hep C, that even if you don't have hepatitis C, you might get it, you know, don't, just, don't alkalize your body in several ways. One, eat more salads, fruits, lots of cucumbers. Cucumbers are great for alkalizing your body. I eat at least uh, in the summertime, I eat like half a cucumber, like those garden cucumbers that are usually yay big. I eat half of that every day. Next day, I have the second one. Health. But um, then I drink my alkaline water. If you like watermelon, now is the time. Eat watermelon. Lots of watermelon. 
have at least two days a week a salad day. You don't want to eat anything else but salad. Now, what will be the result of all of that? The result will be that A, you will lose weight. B, your skin will look glorious like mine. C, you will feel less stressed because when you have a very acidic body, it overtakes your mind and you feel more stressed because things are not working really right and you're really not feeling and you feel tired and so on. Try to meditate at least 10 to 15 minutes or 10 minutes. Start with five minutes. Meditate. You know when I meditate the best? It's in the car when I'm driving. I concentrate only on the driving. I don't think about anything else. I don't fiddle with my phone. I don't fiddle with other things. All I do is drive. Enjoy the driving. I feel how the wheels are going. I feel the motion of the car. I look ahead. I don't, make, I don't think, oh my God, this car looks weird. Oh, that's a silly, no, nothing. Just enjoy. Meditation is living in the moment, enjoying the moment. That's what meditation is. Gisela. Now, yeah? Um, if, if I don't like to drink water, just water, can I put uh, some lemon in it, in the alkaline water? Well, that alkalizes <laughs> they even more. <laughs> <laughs> That's my that Which was my can. point. Yeah. Of course you can here's what it it's making the buzz all over Facebook and everywhere and you see it everywhere. Oh, how to alkalize your body. I mean, it's already out there. Put lemon slices. Make lemon water. It does not I am not really that hip on lemon water, okay? But you can do that, yes. Lemon water works. You can also put a little bit of um, baking soda, but don't use the baking soda, the regular dollar baking soda. Get an aluminum-free baking soda. Aluminum-free, because baking soda, a lot of baking soda has aluminum um, byproducts. And what that does is a terrible number on our brain. Okay, it so really induces Alzheimer overnight, can, aluminum. Can you tell the audience in general what foods actually are contributing to acidic innards? Meats, all meats, all meats. Uh, cheese, um... Lactic acid from milk. I love milk. So I will drink milk because we do want to have the calcium. And I like in the evening a glass of milk or a glass of warm milk. It helps me sleep. But now I have found linden tea. Linden tea does the same thing. And you can stay away from milk. Um, so this is, kale. this is the general things that raise your acidity right. then. Okay. Right. All all uh, foods, high fat foods, everything high fat has the possibility of being more acidic than being alkaline. That's the general rule. Okay. But the best thing is to get Swanson vitamins sells a, a little pH paper and you put it on your tongue and you can test your pH level of your of your body. Mm -hmm. When it turns blue, you are alkaline. If it's red, you're acidic. They may have it reversed. I don't know. They will give you instructions on it. Mm -hmm. Swans and vitamins. Um, they sell a little paper. It's inexpensive. It's it's really great uh, to have that. 
Um, now, Joanna Budwig, who was a student of um, Dr. Warburg, she had, and she died um, not that long ago. Let me see when she died. She died in 2003. Well, a while, but still. Uh, she found, and she had a whole protocol, which I am learning now, this protocol, and I am treating people with cancer. And I must say, I must say to that, uh, I, for those of you who have been listening for a while, know that I have a lot of animals and I also have this little black poodle, which I adore. Uh, but he came to me and he was very, very ill right from the start. He was not healthy. Uh, he had a lot of different uh, skin problems and his teeth were atrocious. They were very, very bad. And I had to make a decision. Do I take all of his teeth out uh, and keep him? But he was already five, six years old. I didn't want to do that because, A, that is very traumatic for a dog. Very, very traumatic. Um, you have to then continuously cook for them or give them soft foods because they can't eat anything else because they have no teeth. Their digestive tract just doesn't work anymore as well if they don't have teeth. So if you have a vet who tells you, oh, your animal has so bad teeth, we have to take the teeth out, think twice. Because I didn't do it with him. And he... Uh, had a very bad toothache. Yeah, it was like for a week he was moping around and then on Saturday he really fell apart and he really, it was really, really bad. And I touched his face and he cried out. He, he had pretty high fever. So I gave him remedies and I gave him several remedies and I'm not going to name all these remedies because I don't want anybody really to to experiment with this because if you don't know what you're doing with something like that, a vet is really the best choice. But I know what I'm doing. So I said, I'm going to, I'm going to help this little guy. And I gave him alkaline water. I uh, gave him a succession of remedies. And today he is feeling much better. He came to me and his little tail wagged and he ate very well last night and he is feeling much better. So in within like uh, 24 hours, he had quite a turnaround. And uh, that can be possible if you know what, what to give. Um, but again, I mean, I... I gave him the alkaline water. Now, don't give your pets alkaline water all the time because a pet, a cat and a dog has to have a very high acidic uh, digestive tract. If they don't have that, the rest of their body may not be working so well. Their assimilation of vitamins and proper nutrition may not be as good. So I would not suggest to drink alkaline water exclusively or um, give a pet alkaline water exclusively. But when there is a problem, Pet doesn't feel well. Is under the weather. You're not. You're not feeling well. You're under the weather. Then alkaline water may be a way to turn it around. Now, the acidity of the body is also very in, uh, instrumental in, for instance, Crohn's disease. And um, and uh, even a cold, even a cold, you uh, you 
one of the reasons one of the reasons why when you get a cold uh you crave um lemons and so on it's not so much the vitamin c tell you the truth it's more that you alkalize the body again and once the body is alkalized it cannot harbor bacteria and it cannot harbor um, um anomalities in the cells as we have as the research has proven to us Joanna Budwig uh, of Germany who passed away in 2003 as I said and she was a protege of Dr. Warbeck uh, she uh, say found in order for proper cellular utilization of oxygen to take place our diets must contain adequate amounts of unsaturated unsaturated fatty acids unsaturated fatty acids and that is you know it am not unsaturated fatty acids olive oil oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um olive oil uh we can coconut oil uh all of these saturated fatty acids like from meat now butter is a saturated but it's not a polysaturated i think one of the one of the major reasons in our and many people many of my clients have said that to me well i know that cancer is produced by our diets well yes and no we don't have to consume this stuff we can look at the label i know when i eat one of those packaged things you know that is says oh it uh, has everything in it and i cook it up i know the next day i feel ill so i don't do it anymore another thing is that contributes hugely hugely to cancer cell division is sugar much more dangerous than salt everybody you know i i was at a at a dinner on on said saturday night the woman who cooked she said oh i only cook um without salt and if i use salt i use himalayan salt well that's not really good because your cells need the salt but they don't need the sugar sugar is something it's poison i don't care what sugar it is i don't care if it is if it is agave i don't care if it is uh, whatever no if it's sugar if it says sugar and it's sweet it's poison the only good one that is good is honey and maple syrup those two uh they do not harm your cells every other every other sugar will harm your body and cells and you know that's why chocolate do not eat the milk chocolate only eat chocolate without sugar 80% dark chocolate preferably organic if you want to eat chocolate now the occasional praline or the occasional spoon of sugar or the occasional piece of cake is not going to kill you but if you live on sodas as i have said before if you live on sodas and you have a soda in the morning you have 10 sodas during the day or even four or five sodas during the day you will die sooner and most of the time a miserable death because then you will have all kinds of body aches you will have joint problems you will have you know your body will get messed up sugar is not 
something that we should have. And unfortunately, most of the packaged food, everything that you buy has sugar in it. Not salt, but sugar. And when you buy bouillon, look at the low sodium. But there has to be some in there. So don't be afraid of a little bit of salt. But be very afraid of more sugar. Because it messes up your brain, messes up your cells. It even, never mind diabetes. Diabetes is, is one of the, one of the, Things that, why do you think by diabetes exists? Because our cells do not convert all that sugar attack. And our glucose level rises up. And once that rises up, it destroys your kidneys. It destroys your vision. It destroys your nerves. It destroys it destroys your brain, everything. So be very afraid of sugar and eat leafy, leafy, at least one day a week. Make a day, start with one day. We have, we have one or two days of fish. We have one day that we only have salad. And I know my husband today but uh, a pork fillet that he wants to have so he can have that. If you have that one day a week, don't have it every day. Don't eat hamburger every day. It's not so much the fat. It is what your body will do with that food. We are what we eat. We are what we eat. So, now that I scared the dickens out of you, I want to uh, have, I'm going to have a new um, little segment. Every show will have a small little segment about pet facts, okay? And, pe and, and these facts will be mostly also safety. One of the things that I found, which is just really was, and I have several of these. I'm sure anybody who has a dog has one of these, right? Amnon, you have one of these? No, we have just the regular leash because ah, good for you. She's we because don't walk her in the street. She was she runs in the backyard. All right. Okay. Well, I have I have several of these because when I go camping, so we always have to have our dogs on the leash. And I had, and while I was uh, looking through research and so on about pet facts and so on, I came across this and it makes total sense. It makes total, total sense. They have found that these locking mechanism, you know, you pull, you pull your pet pulls and it goes back and forth, right? Like this, right? And you can lock this mechanism, see, like this. Well, it didn't, it didn't lock. <laughs> yeah, now it locked. See? Now it locked. Okay? Yeah. That they have broken. You have this here. You think your leash is locked, and it broke, and the pet ran into the street, got hit by a car, got attacked by another dog, got, I mean, all kinds of bad things happened. And I want you to know that if you have one of these, be sure that the locking mechanism always works. When they get a little older, they break. So either replace it or don't have it have a regular leash. I'm going to toss mine, I'm going to donate mine, and I'm going to have just a regular leash. Yep. So, yes. No, that's it. Yeah, exactly. that's it. I never, Dad, I never oh. understood. I really never understood these leash leashes. Why do you have to let the dog get twenty feet ahead of you when all? I mean, they can get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, mine are all just six feet, 
six, uh, mine are all, uh, no, I think 10 feet. This one is 10 feet. Uh, but uh, you're right, you know. I have found that uh, the last time that I went camping and I had this thing with me, um, little TZ ran and there was a big dog and he came right at him and, you know, I grabbed the leash in like this because right. it didn't pull back right away. Yeah, it was awkward and it was not a good scene and I, I agree. Yep. Regular leash with a nice little harness, not a neck collar, but a nice harness, a harness on, because your dog will obey you better by having the harness than the neck. If they have the neck collar, especially a larger dog, will lead more into it. You know, I hear this all the time. My dog doesn't obey me. He doesn't want to walk on the leash. Well, because if you had a harness on him, you will be able to control the pet much better. And it's also then a learning experience. But we'll have that there another show on that. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I hope you learned something. Please do be aware if you have questions or if you do want to wonder if you have someone that um, has cancer, please send me an email. You can send it right through Nissan Communication or you can send me the email at homeopaths, the number four, me, at no. live. No, no, no. You have a new email. Please Why don't you use it? Homeopath, okay. I mean, homeopath or Gisela at, what was it? Homeopath for, no, I, for, I forgot. At live. No, it's not at yeah, live. -I it's at your own, yeah. it's at your own uh, show. Oh, it's Gisela at mylifemywill.com. Or homeopath there. at mylifemywill.com. Yeah, Amnon set that up for me. I'm such a computer illiterate that yeah. <laughs> I know a lot about homeopathy and health. Right. Computers. So I I, if they much. go to if they go to your page and up at the top it says host Gisela Di Carlo. If they just click on it, it'll take them to their email. Yeah, and they don't need to go. remember easy. what it is. Easy, easy, easy. Yep. Yes. I enjoyed being with you. Thank you for visiting me at my home. I will see you next Monday at 5 p.m. And be sure that I will have a great show prepared for you again with a lot of knowledge that you need to have to make it through the day and through life. I wish you a wonderful week and see you next Monday. Bye bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.